Oh, wait, let's try that again. I think maybe we need to be a little bit louder here. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Oh my gosh, Temple Judea, you must not be as excited as I am. I'm really excited. Mario, I think we need it a little bit louder because I think maybe nobody can hear me. Let's try it again. Shabbat Shalom. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Shabbat Shalom. It is a very special Shabbat. It's Friday the 13th. Are we excited about that? Not so much. Okay, it's not really much of a thing in Judaism, but it's also a lot of other things. It's Shabbat Shemot, when we begin the book of Shemot, the book of Exodus, and our whole master narrative of our people, the story of our people that really weaves through our entire liturgy, our prayer service, and all of our holidays and our whole year. In fact, this very morning, Jenny and I started with a lovely preschool class from the Margot School right here. And we told the story through the stained glass windows that are right here in our beautiful sanctuary. And It is an honor to invite forward Joyce Shapiro, who's going to lead us in the blessings for our candles. If you don't already have a Sidora prayer book, please find one below your seat and turn to page 120, 120 for the blessings for the candles. And if you're watching online, please go ahead and light your candles at this time with us. Rafa 
אשר קדשנו במצוותיו וציוונו להדליק נר, להדליק נר של Please take a moment to say hello to someone nearby. Welcome them. If you don't know them, introduce yourselves, please. about to welcome Shabbat with Lechado D. It's a song, a psalm <clears throat> that we sing to welcome the Shabbos bride as though that's the metaphor that we're so joyous that we're welcoming in that Shabbat bride that at the very end we stand up to welcome Shabbat as if she were a bride coming into the room, into the sanctuary. And as we welcome Shabbat, I do want to point out that we are online, so those who are at home can watch us, but we are going to try something a little different and not have the screens down so that you don't see everybody who's watching necessarily. We want to try to uh, try something a little bit different in the sanctuary. So if you're online, um, we welcome you. We're glad you're with us. And if you're in the room, we're glad you're with us too. Either way, we're just glad you're here joining together in our prayers for Shabbat. We turn to page 130. for Lecha Dodi. Lecha Dodi Nikrat Kala Bene Shabbat Lecha Bela Lecha Dodi We rise to greet the Shabbos bride. 
We remain standing for the Hatsi Kaddish. Yit katal be yit katash maratha. Mel madita kirute be yamlik malkute. Ve khaye khon yom ve khon. O khaye de kol beit Israel. We continue with our call to worship, page 146, the Baruchu. Rolling to die, rolling to die, die 
Please be seated and join us with the Ve'ahavta, page 154. <speaking in Hebrew> Eshinantam levanecha, bedibarta baham, eshiftecha bebeitecha, ubelechtecha baderech, ubeshochbecha ufkumecha, ukshartam leho taliadecha, behayuleta tafo benenecha, ukhtaftam al mezuzot beitecha, ubisharecha. Leman tizkehu ho, ba'asitem et kol mitzvotai, v'item kedoshim l'eloheikem, ani Adonai eloheikem, asher otzeti etchem meretz mitzrayim, liot lachem l'eloheim, ani Adonai eloheikem. On page 157, there, is a, there are two different introductions to this next prayer, the Mecha Mocha. And I'm going to amend um, one of them a bit for this day, for Martin Luther King weekend, as we celebrate. As we stand on the parted shores of history, we do still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot. Wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt. There is a better place, a promised land. There is a winding way to that promise, and it passes through a wilderness. Perhaps we're in that wilderness now. There's no way to get from here to there, except by joining hands, by marching together. We sing together with all of the celebration in our hearts for our own people's freedom and our own commitment to working to hold hands, to march towards the freedom of all. Please join us, Mecha Mocha, page 158 a special version. <laughs> Mi 
מלכותך רהוב עניך, מוקע ים לפני משה. מלכותך רהוב עניך, מוקע ים לפני משה. and join in our prayers together for the Amidah on page 164. my lips that my mouth May declare your praise. האל הגדול, הגיבור והנורא, אל עליון, גומל חסדים טובים וקונה הכל, וזוכר חסדי אבות ואימהות, ומביא גאולה לפני בניהם, למען שמו ואהבה, מלך עוזר ומושיע ומגן. ברוך אתה אדוני, מגן אברהם בעזרת שרה, אתה גיבור לעולם אדוני, מחיה הכל, אתה רב להושיע. משיב הרוח ומוריד הגשם, מכלכל חיים וכסף, מחיה הכל ברחמים רבים, צומך נופלים ורופא קולים, ומטין אסורים, ומקיים אמונתו לשני עפר. מי כמוך בעל גבורות ומי דומה לך? מלך ממית ומחיה ומצמיח ישועה ונאמן אתה לאחיות הכל ברוך אתה אדוני מחיה הכל אתה קדוש ושמך קדוש וקדושים בכל יום יללו חסלה ברוך אתה אדוני האל הקדוש. Please be seated. Join me at the top of page 173. Together. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch atah Adonai, Mekadesh, HaShabbat. ורצה אדוני אלוהינו בעמך ישראל, ותפילתם באהבה תקבל, ותהי לרצון תמיד עבודת ישראל עמך, ברוך אתה אדוני, שאורך לבדך ביראה נעבוד. We come to our prayer for thanksgiving, which we say in our tradition every day, to thank God for every blessing that we have. And so we... turn inward for a moment and think of what is it that we are truly grateful for on this Shabbat. 
What did this week remind us of? What did this week teach us? What did this week show us that we need to maybe be even more grateful for? We take a moment to think about those blessings. Sometimes we share them with the community today. Let's just keep them to ourselves and say thank you to God for each one of those blessings. Baruch Adonai Hatov Shimcha Ulecha Na'e Lehodot. We come to our prayer for peace. And it is hard to believe that it was almost a year ago that a gunman entered congregation B'nai Yisrael in Colleyville, Texas, and took members of that community hostage for an 11 hour standoff. Not only do I remember it well, because I think we probably all do, and we were all paying attention at that moment, but the rabbi there, Rabbi Charlie Citron Walker, is a dear friend and colleague of mine and friend of mine and Brian's that we spent the year in Israel with. And I remember saying at the time, if there's anyone who can handle this situation, it's Charlie. And he did so beautifully. And he's been honored in his incredible way of dealing with that difficult situation. But of course, violence persists and we pray that we will all work towards, and we are in our congregation working with the ADL, we work with AJC regularly to, and so many others, um, our Shomrim and our security officers of the Coral Gables Police Department to continue to make sure that not only is our place a safe place, but also that we can work towards more safety for all people and that no one should be threatened because of their beliefs or worshiping their religion. So this prayer for peace was written by our friend, Rabbi Charlie Citron Walker. In a world that's broken and shattered, plagued by indifference, falsehood, and corruption, we feel that uncertainty. We feel the pain, and we are not helpless. God, we pray for peace, for wholeness and healing, for safety when violence touches us all. God, we pray for peace, for justice and compassion, for acceptance in the face of hatred. We will not be held hostage to hopelessness. We pray for peace. We struggle for peace. We bring peace. We will be whole. God, help us be whole as we pray for peace.
we take a few moments for our own silent thoughts and prayers. We take time for our prayers for our loved ones who are ill of body, of mind, of spirit. And we pray for the strength of each one who is ill, each one in recovery, each caregiver. We especially think of at this time, these loved ones. Hope Ellen Keller, Yifat Bat Yoram, Judy Brown, Paul Weiner, Ronald Horwich, Alice Horwich, Isabella De La Husse, Marty Gitlitz, Natalie Keegan, Roberta Lowenstein, Yoli Marlowe, Greg Miller, Joe Botkin, Jessica Hunter, Yale David, Kim Levine, Marsha Kropp, Karina Casanas, Brenda Tucci, Carol Shulkin, Steve Hertz, Ava Wilson, Jenny Wasserstrom, Sandy Kramer, Nancy Pastroff, Kyle Gittleman, Erwin Fetter, Eileen Danheiser, Barbara Dorman, Jesse Friedman, Josh Snyder, Patty Campo, Orlando Catano, Michael Lebb, Hilda Kane, Ross Lipton, Diana Maria Lane, Hannah Batavora, Boaz Ashbell, Harvey Ezrol, Marilyn Tupler, Robin Dennison, Digna Plaskett, Sophia Sabillo, Melissa Wessels, Mellon, Mary Cornfield, Henry Forer, Steve Weingrad, Weingrad May Ear Shapiro, Tim Dorr, Carlos Gambos, Etta Kessler, Mandalay Nurkin, Rick Vair, Hazel Bernstein, Leslie Cohen, Samuel Naom, Natalie Siegel, Isabella Lopez, Ben McKinley, Donna Johnson, Michael Rosenblatt, Ben Greenberg, Ben Greenberg, Stephen Ullman, Joseph Forer, Frankie Linsky, Ron Linsky, Floyd Schultz, Jacob Gordon, Deborah Forer, Rita Petticore, Janie Levin, Howard Wasserman, Robert and Dee Dee Moss, Marsha Kornblum Weston. Barton Udell, Gal Munzer, Juliana Kalish, Diana Stahl, Elise Trumbull, Caroline Miller, Larry Silver. If you'd like to say other loved ones' names, please rise as I come around and say the names you're thinking of as we pray for each one for strength, healing, and hope.
Tadonai, Rofei, Hacholim, and we all say, Amen. 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 Tonight we are honored, and I have to say I'm actually really excited because Becco and I have been talking for years now. I mean, years. It was through the, um, in the pandemic, I think, when we first found each other, connected, and um, he is somebody who really has already taught me a good deal and has taught our congregation already online on zoom um, but tonight what when we had talked many months ago about him coming to speak here i said do you think you could actually be here in person he said of course i can be here um, let's just hope we can all be here together and it is so wonderful to have had that to look forward to becco and to have you here in person i'll give just a very brief um, a brief introduction because I don't want to waste any time and take any time away from his presentation and his words. You do have his bio. It's been sent out um, via email, but just in case you missed it, he's going to be speaking tonight about answering Dr. King's question. Where do we go from here? Chaos or community? That topic came about because Becco and I talked and I said, you know, I know you don't have all of the answers, but we want to know, like, what can we do going from here? Well, all of us, not just Temple Judea, but how can we move forward at this difficult time in our nation and in our world? And it is more than 50 years after Dr. King's assassination right now, and it's a good time, an important time, to be asking those questions and really struggling with them as well. Becco is a a uh, sought after DEI instructor, um, consultant and facilitator, that's diversity, equity and inclusion. His clients include all kinds of big giant companies and Temple Judea, I mean, come on, uh, American Express, Burger King and Citibank. He identifies as black, gay and Jewish and has served on many committees and boards for organizations, including the Jewish Federation of Greater Miami and the National LGBTQ Task Force, as, as well as many others. And he has so many qualifications, you can look them up in his bio. But for now, Becco, it is a real pleasure and honor to welcome you to our Bema at Temple Judea in person, as well as your husband, Eric, who's here tonight. We're glad you're both here. And Becco, we always are excited to learn from you and uh, hope that this will be part of a continuing conversation uh, for many years. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, it is so good to be here. As Rabbi mentioned last year, 
because of the pandemic, we had to come together virtually. So it's just nice to be here in person, to shake some hands. I've been fortunate enough to get a few hugs and to see your faces. So um, it's just really good to be here. One member mentioned that it's very Hamish and it feels very Hamish here, like a really tight knit community. So thank you for welcoming me in. It's a particular honor to be here to kind of bring in Shabbat. You know, as Rabbi mentioned, there's so much going on in our world right now, and I really look forward to Shabbat. It's very important in our household because it's an opportunity just to unplug, just to slow down just a little bit, reflect. So the question is, where do we go from here? Chaos or community? That's the question that Dr. King asked us so many years ago. So this weekend, we're so fortunate to celebrate the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a man whose life in words empowered generations of Americans to stand up for equality, a man who was instrumental in the passage of the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, a recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. But many of us, of course, are familiar with the I Have a Dream speech, a brilliant speech. And one of the lines is, I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. It's one of my favorite lines because it's very powerful, especially when you put it into context. Dr. King was a black man living in the 60s, yeah, at a time when this country really didn't value people like him. And yet, he believed in the best that America had to offer after being beaten and jailed, accused of being a race baiter, Dr. King never lost faith in the Amer America's promise of freedom and justice. He has so many gifts, but for me, what I really think he did was he had the ability to help us see the divine spark in ourselves. Now, depending on tradition, divine spark is some, sometimes considered God, sometimes we refer to it as purpose or meaning. Whatever you choose to call it, it's, it's something good inside of us, something that we can share with the world. And as Jews, we often use that divine spark through tikkun olam, yeah? this idea of repairing the world. But as we know, it's not enough to just repair the world. We have an obligation to make the thing better, not just fix it, but to make it better. So for instance, when we think about bigotry, it's not enough to say, well, I don't use those terms or I don't partake in that language and then sit on the sidelines. We can't do that. Just as we wouldn't want someone to say, well, I'm not really anti-Semitic, but I do buy the music by, uh, of those who are anti-Semitic, right? That's not enough. We have to stand up and call it out every chance that we get. Dr. King inspired us and not just black people, white people, all people. He inspired us to be better, to do better, in fact. And that in part through social justice, or what Rabbi Heschel called praying with our feet. That's what, how the way he described his experience marching in Selma with Dr. King. And that means that it's not enough to just pray. We have to take some action. We have to do all that we can to affect real change in the world. That's what Dr. King inspired. He also had the ability to help us see the humanity in each other, to connect us to our sameness, to help us see that our lives are in fact interrelated. He urged us to focus on the qualities that unify us, not just separate us. And regardless of race or religion, he helped us see that we really were just human beings, all pursuing the American dream, working hard to embrace the values that make this country as unique as it is. And we know that building coalitions with people from diverse backgrounds is emblematic of his work and his vision for the country. Now, personally, I wasn't familiar with the book. His last book was, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community? And in it, Dr. King explored his experience having led the civil rights movement. He spoke about the Vietnam War, he spoke about even the relationship between blacks and Jews in the country. But at the crux, it's really about where do we go from here, the future of the country? 
And so how do we stand firm and move forward nonviolently together? He called on us to take the nation to a higher destiny, and he called that a beloved community. And that's a community that's rooted in fairness, respect, and forgiveness. And we certainly need more of that these days. But I believe if we dig a little deeper, it isn't just about where do we go from here. It's really asking, who are we? Who do we want to be? Not just as individuals or here at Temple Judea, but as a nation. And I believe that we should strive to unite around the values of what it means to be an American. Now, before I get the eye rolls, let me clarify. I'm not talking about nationalism. I'm referring to anyone living in this country who embraces the values that make us so wonderful. I'm not referring to these sort of pseudo patriots, those who use the very symbols of our democracy, the symbols of our freedom to divide us. I'm talking about the values like independence, equality before the law, justice and solidarity. So it's an interesting story. My parents uh, lived in the Northeast and they were part-timers here in Florida. And they finally made the big move some years back. And they identify as liberal and they moved to a rather conservative pocket on the west coast of Florida. And uh, recently they experienced their first major hurricane, right? And living in Florida, we know what that's all about. And so they were without electricity for some time along with many other neighbors. But when they described what was going on, I was so amazed because those who had generators were saying, come over, plug in your cell phones where you can stay in communication with your families. Um, there were two houses that were tasked with making coffee for people on the block every morning, making baked goods, really sharing resources. And I can tell you, they were asking, what can we do to help? What do you need? What they didn't ask was, who did you vote for? Who do you love or who do you pray to? It was about solidarity, coming together around those shared values. As Rabbi mentioned, we are living in arguably one of the most divisive times in our nation. And much of it is sadly fueled by these toxic levels of political discord. And political disagreements, that's nothing new. Frankly, I think it's healthy when it's done in good faith because it forces both sides to sit down, to listen to one another, compromise and hopefully work on the issues facing our communities. However, it seems that we've regressed into some state of chaos right now, where untruths and incivility have become consistent features of the current landscape. And that toxicity has spilled out into other areas of our lives. I'm sure many of us in this room, we know friends and family members who've stopped speaking to one another because of political differences. Last year, when I met with a group virtually, I spoke about tribalism. And I think that tribalism in and of itself is not particularly a bad thing. As Jews, we call ourselves members of the tribe, right? We do this in sports and with other nations in fun, competitive ways. But I believe it becomes dangerous when we start seeing folks different from ourselves as less than human, yeah? And we start othering them and seeing them as a threat to our security, to our identity, in fact. And race and religion is particularly, they're particularly charged at this particular time. Anti-Semitism is the highest it's been in the 40 years since the ADL started tracking this information. Anti-Black racism is getting worse by the day. But we shouldn't forget the other targeted groups right now, such as Asians, trans and non-binary folks, Muslims, unhoused people, yeah? immigrants, documented and otherwise, they all are worthy of respect. And it seems that at one time, not too long ago, that we empathized, we had some empathy for, for those from marginalized groups. And now so many folks are insistent upon saying, well, I have a right to say what I wanna say. Yeah. Now, I argue you do, but it, just because you have a right to say it doesn't mean you have to say it, right? I think we need to return to some civility. There's this pushback now. We're even seeing in certain uh, school districts throughout the country where educators are no longer permitted to give Holocaust education 
or teach about slavery or Jim Crow or the issues facing the LGBT community here in the United States. I don't know about you, but that terrifies me. It's an effort to mute and erase segments of our population. I think we should all be mortified. We need to stand up for equality and full inclusion of everyone in this country. How many of you know who Joaquin Prince is? Rabbi Joaquin Prince, All right? German-American rabbi who emigrated to the United States about two years before the Holocaust. He was a proud Zionist and a huge supporter of the civil rights movement. He was also a dear friend of Dr. King's, and he spoke at the March in Washington. In his speech, he said, America must not become a nation of onlookers. We must not become silent. For the sake of the image, the idea, and the aspiration of America itself. Rabbi Prince knew the dangers of tribalism. He knew what would happen if, for those who just stand on the sidelines and watch the injustice. He saw it firsthand. He saw the rise in Nazi Germany. The question is, do we, do we see the dangers? So my husband and I moved to France some years back and um, Last year, we became eligible to uh, ask for French nationality. So we prepared our files and um, we wait to hear back for an interview. And the interview was the last step in the process. And during that time, you're really trying to learn everything you can about all things, about French history, French culture, of course, the language and, as well. And you're not really sure what they're going to ask you. So we're really studying, having a good time with it in particular around the symbols and the values of France. So in France, it's all about liberty, equality, and fraternity. They want to know, why do you want to be French? Are you integrating? Do you respect and embrace these values? Because that's essentially what it is to be French for them. What I hadn't expected during this process was to start thinking about what it means to be an American. And frankly, I started to get a little emotional because it's something I've just always taken for granted. I've lived abroad for a big chunk of my life, but I hadn't really considered that. What does it mean to be an American in that way? And I started to maybe feel a little tribal, thinking about my people here in the United States and what we do and what makes us unique and so special. And I do love France, but I tell you here in the United States, there is something very unique. No matter what our history, and there are lots of flaws, lots of flaws. It doesn't matter where in the world you come from, you can come and achieve the American dream. They may throw more obstacles in your way, but it's entirely possible to do. You can come, get an education, start a business, whatever it is, you can make that happen here. It makes us very unique. <clears throat> Pardon me. So I wanna ask you now, what would it look like if we viewed ourselves as part of this beloved community. What would that look like? I'm not referring to some utopian society free of conflict. I'm referring to a society where we center values like justice and reconciliation. A society where we can confront our painful past, where we can begin to repair it. Oftentimes what we're doing now is sweeping it under the rug, thinking somehow it's just going to disappear. It's not working. It's festering and it's contributing to this discord that we're seeing in our society right now. I acknowledge that the work is not easy. Rabbi and I were talking about what are the next steps? How do you make that happen? It's not easy. And I do this work. But like many of you, I get angry, I get frustrated watching what's going on in our country. And I realize that as much as I like to figuratively duke it out with those I don't always agree with, that's not how I choose to present myself in the world. I know it's not going to make anything better. It may feel good temporarily, but it's not gonna make anything better. And so I made a commitment to choose community. I do that in my personal life, I do it in my professional life. My husband may have a different story because he's a bit of the filter for me, so he hears it all. But, you know, I make a choice to choose community. And so there are limits. So I choose not to engage with those who feel like people like me or others don't have a right to exist. That's just not an area that I can contribute. 
but I'm willing to sit down with anyone who's interested in finding common ground. I think that's important, and we should be trying to do more of that. We have to stop retreating to our separate corners, and we have a tendency to do that. My hope is that we can start to lower those walls and come together, not just coexist, but actually be in community with one another. And I believe that that's what Dr. King was trying to do, trying to unite us around those values as Americans, those shared values as a beloved community. So the question is, where do we go from here? It's a great question. The first thing I want to offer is intention. So in Hebrew is kavanah, and I love it because we often think of it in terms of prayer. But I like to bring it into my daily life in terms of the work that I'm doing, and I ask myself, what's my intention? Another way of looking at it is direction of the heart, which I find really beautiful. What's my heart saying? Why am I doing this? Rabbi Heschel said, in fact, that when we're, it's not enough just to do the mitzvot. We have to think, what is our intention? The idea is that it's meant to transform us in some way as well. He said the goal of man is to be what he does. I love that. The goal of man is to be what he does. Transformation of the soul is another way that he puts it. I want to leave you with this. I often hear, what can we expect from our elected officials? You know, obviously politics is front and center right now. I believe in partnership, and I believe if we can have those elect officials work with us to answer these questions in terms of inclusion and how to build these beloved communities, fantastic. But frankly, I think the situation is urgent, and we can't wait for them to help answer the questions. I think this has to be a grassroots situation where we all come together and figure out how we want to do it. The brilliant poet June Jordan said, we are the ones that we're waiting for to transform this reluctant nation into its best self. So I ask you, where do we go from here? Chaos or community? You decide. Thank you. We are the ones we've been waiting for, Becco just said. And you know, this week we read in the Torah, the book of Shemot, the book of names. And there's a whole drosh on this week's Torah portion about the names that are mentioned and why they're mentioned. And one explanation is that those names are mentioned because each one is so important in being able to push history forward. And that applies to us today too. Each one of us Maybe we are the ones that we are waiting for. Each one of us needs to take a stand, needs to move forward in some way. I want you to know that we at Temple Judea are um, not only very grateful to Becco for his teaching, not only tonight, but also through the pandemic. And we hope more ahead um, as you continue to teach us and guide us in figuring out how we can all be a part of making this community and world better. But also we are looking into um, and have been looking into a civil rights trip that will go to visit Birmingham and Selma and Atlanta and civil rights museums in those places and important places in the history of the civil rights era. We're going to be taking that trip hopefully in the fall. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, let me know because that is um, something we are planning as well. Another opportunity to learn together as we move forward. Thank you, Becco. It's an honor uh, to call forward past president Gary Matzner for a few temple announcements, Gary. And then we're going to conclude our service. As Gary's coming up, I do wanna let you know because Becco talked about Abraham Joshua Heschel a good bit. Rabbi Heschel, we're honoring his 50th yard side, his, the 50 years since Abraham Joshua Heschel died tonight. So I'll, I'll mention that in a moment as well. Thanks, Gary. Hi. Hey, I think Hi. he's this microphone. Okay, great. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. As the rabbi indicated, I'm a past president, Gary Matzner of the temple. And I'd like to thank Joyce Shapiro for lighting the Shabbat candles. Norman Sachs, who will be doing the, the Kiddush and the Motzi blessings tonight. We'd also like to thank our guest speaker, uh, uh, our guest, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, our incredible guest speaker, Becco Lechman. Thank you. 
and our cantor, our, our guest cantor, Gaston. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm going to uh, I'm pronouncing your name. Uh, I'm, I'm apologizing ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, Gaelic. No, I can try it. Bogomol Ni. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And on Saturday, I'd like hope everyone or some of you could join us for a minion service. And when I was president, it was one of the most enjoyable things was going with my son, Ethan, who's with us tonight and uh, going to the minion service on Saturday morning. So I uh, look forward to doing that and also Torah study beginning at 9 a.m. You can attend in person or watch uh, on Zoom. And make sure to join us for after services for our own egg Shabbat, uh, which will be held in the Grossman Room, which is great to have that again. We have so many more exciting events and opportunities for all of you to join us and connect and be involved. Check, check your email or Temple website for more details. So thank you and Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One last announcement, which is that tomorrow at Torah study, you can join us either online or in person. And we're going to be studying the text, the Torah of Dr. Martin Luther King, some of the teachings of his that relate to the Torah. It's a really neat teaching. Um, so we hope you can join us for that. Please, let's continue our service with page 586 with the Alenu. I'm going to ask you to rise and any children, 13, I'm going to say 19 or younger, because they're like a bunch of like teenagers here. We'd love for you to join us. You're just, you don't have to do anything. Just come up here and help me open the ark. Page 586 for the LA New. 19 and under. Come on, come on down. Come on down, come on down. Aleinu le shavach la dona kol la tet geduna le yotzer berishit shelo asano ke goyei haratzot velo samano ke mishpechot adama shelo same kelkenu kahem megor aleinu ke kol hamonam. Banachno Horim Umishtachavim Umodim Lefne Melech Malchei Ramlachim Akadosh Baruchu Benemar Mehaya Adonai Lemelech Al Kol Haaretz Bayom Mahu Bayom Mahu our thoughts turn now to loved ones who have left this earth, but who remain in our hearts, who remain as inspirations to us, those who came before us but left with us their values, their teachings, their lives as models for us of how to behave in this world, how to help, how to dedicate ourselves to community, to a better world. We especially remember Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, who died 50 years ago, one who not only marched with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., but who he himself, as we heard a little bit about tonight, was a true leader of our people as well. Tonight, we remember the yard sites, the anniversaries of these loved ones, Nettie Altshuler, Erwin Kamner, Solom S. Solomon Cohen, Ida Cole, Elise Kornblum, Goldberg Hyatt, Minnie Zarkin Crystal, Lily Gottlieb Doliner, Israel Dorotinsky, Dorothy Dresner, May Ehrenreich, Sarah Easterman, E. Herman Fisher, Jesse Freeman, Dorothy Greenberg, Martin Green, Ursula Green, Harvey Jacobson, Irvin Kalski, Dora Kaminsky, Sydney Klein, Fanny Davidson, Klumach, 
Sylvia Kravitz, Harriet Kurtz, Sydney W. Langer, David Levine, Alfred Matzner, Lena Picard, Ruth Rapin, Milton J. Reich, Rich, Milton J. Rich, Randy Robbins, Mildred Schimmel, Manny Schreiber, Cynthia Shaw, Ethel Solar, Libby Sterling, Julius Wishnia, Meyer Zuckerman, J. Allen Siegel. And we remember those who died in the year that has passed. Jane Wasserman, Paul A. Gutlon, Leonard J. Adrian, Zelda Zalas, Elaine Noble, Ulysses Maciel de Oliveira Nito, Kelly Henley, Lillian Hilbert, Marilyn Kaplan, Judge Marvin Gilman, Stephanie Altman, Greta Schulak, Shirley Spiegelman, Ethel Marion Crane, Vivian Wickhoff, Jack Blumenfeld, Dottie Fish, Robert Rosen, Sylvia Cohen Kelman, David Michael Wolfson, Martha Burke, Yetta Perlman, Renee Berry, Ralph D'Angelo, Rosalie, Rosalie Pincus, Dorothy Spirer, Alicia Cohen Frank, Judith Weiser, Andrew Wax, Shirley Harris, Jackie Leone, Robert Spiegelman, Stuart London, Charlotte Brody, Barbara O'Neill Bird, Sharon Presby, Ethelyn Morris, Robert S. Stone, Brooke Benezra, Steve Niepler, and all those we hold in our hearts. Please, if you are in the week of mourning, we invite you to rise. If you're in the month of mourning, please rise. If you're in the year of mourning, please rise. And if you're observing a yard site tonight, please rise. We all rise together as one sacred community as we join together in the sacred words of the Mourners Kaddish. They can be found on page 598. We join together. It kadal vi kadash shame rabba, ve alma di barachurite vi am lich machute, the chayachon of yom mechon of a chaye de kobe Israel, vagala vizman karivim ru amen. Yehe shame rabba me barach le alam alame almaya, yit barach vi ishtabak vi par vi ramavi nase, vi tadar vi talevi talal shame de kudisha brehu, le la min kol berhata vishirata. Tushbechata v'nechamata dami rambe alma vimru amen. Yehe shalema rabba min shemaya v'chayim aleinu v'yo kol Yisrael vimru amen. Ose shalom bimramav luya se shalom aleinu v'yo kol Yisrael vimru amen. Ose shalom bimramav. Oh, yes, I shall know my name. I'll call Israel. Yes, I shall know. Yes, I shall know. Shalom, I know. I'll call Israel. Yes, I shall know. Yes, I shall know. Shalom, I Al-Kol Yisrael Eimru, Eimru, Amen Makor Chaim, source of life, let us hold fast to hope. Let us, as Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel taught, be sure that every little deed counts, that every word has power. Let us, in Dr. King's words, muster the hope to have the courage to face the uncertainties of the future, to give our tired feet new strength as we continue our forward stride toward the city of freedom. Let us remember that Dr. King's work is not yet done, and that even though our days may be dreary with low hovering clouds and our nights darker than a thousand midnights, that we are yet living in the creative turmoil of a genuine civilization struggling to be born. We are called upon to help bring about that new world. May it be your will that we answer that call, as we all say. Amen. Amen. Shabbat, shalom. Shabbat shalom. We have a special closing song. <laughs> Don't we? Yes, I think we, we do. do. Our yes, closing do. song is We Shall Overcome. So we hope we sing it together. Shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe. 
Shabbat Shalom, everybody. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much to Cantor Gaston, Bogomolny, to Jenny Snyder, to Becco Lichtman, to all of you for being here and all of our volunteers. It's an honor to call forward Norman Sachs for our Kiddush and Motzi. And then we have a great Oneg right down the hall. So please join us for that as well. Norman. <laughs> yeah. I always say it's difficult. To, is this on? Oh, OK. Difficult to follow Gaston. <laughs> we'll do it together. Well, thank you. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei peri agafen Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kidshanu em mitzvotav Eratzavano Beshavat kodesho Meava huvratzon Ilanu Zikaron lemahasever Heishit in <laughs> In Kaltano, Baruchata Adonai, Mekadesh, Ashavat, Amen. Very good. Chaim. Mm, very nice. That was good. <laughs> We give thanks to God for it. Our voices rising song together as our joyful song is said. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Otsi lechem min haoret Amen B'tay avon! Shabbat shalom! Please join us for Oneg right down the hall. Thank you, Barbara Bolvin and Myra Locke and others who helped us to have a beautiful Oneg. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Happy Martin Luther King Day weekend.